It's time once again for the City of Maple Grove Report. I'm Dick Kaiser from CCX Media. Thanks for joining us along with Heidi Nelson, Maple Grove City Administrator. Welcome once again. Thank you. We've got a rather short meeting to talk about, about 50 minutes of a meeting and one big item that took most of the time. We'll touch on that and also a lot coming up in the community. Yep. So get your calendar out as we give you some reminders. Before that meeting, which was on February 20th, a work session for the city, two key items. And the first was PUPS. Yeah. We've talked a little bit about this in the past. Remind us what that is and what the discussion was. Yeah, so PUPS is our um, Pets Under Police Security facility. It's located up off, kind of near the Public Works campus off of 89th next to um, the regional, the public safety training facility there. Mm -hmm. um, we have been um, kind of looking at this facility. We've had a number of issues there in terms of capacity, being over capacity on multiple occasions in the last few years, um, needing to close it to, you know, accepting additional animals. We mm -hmm. partner with seven cities up here in the Northwest Metro that we serve out of this facility for animal control. Um, in addition, the facility is over 30 years old and has um, served these communities well, but is in need of reinforcement investment. So um, did some work to understand, you know, what we could do from an operational perspective to try to reduce numbers of animals coming in, um, but also, you know, what we might do to increase capacity and then just reinvest in that facility um, to make the operations a little bit better. So um, good feedback from the council. And now we're going to be working with kind of our seven joint powers partners to think about what that reinvestment might look like. So um, good, good operation up there um, that serves this, you know, Northwest Metro and we'll see what comes next in terms of reinvestment. All right, we'll keep you up to date on that. Another item that was discussed in the work <coughs> session was Rush Creek Cemetery. And again, we've talked a little bit about this before. Yep. Where is it and give us a little history. Yeah, so Rush Creek Cemetery is located up off of um, Territorial Road. So kind of one of the oldest roads in you know the state of Minnesota. And this is one of the oldest cemeteries in town as well. So Rush Creek Cemetery, it's owned by a cemetery association run by a cemetery board. They had come to us to ask the city to take on that cemetery, um, kind of waning interest and in, um, those cemetery board members and everyone's, you know, getting a bit older. Mm -hmm. um, it is still an active cemetery. There's um, about 180 plots in there that are sold, not buried yet, and then they still have plots left to sell. So it's still an ongoing concern there. Um, concern, you know, concern amongst the council and I think amongst staff was there's a lot of, you know, there's a number of cemeteries in Maple Grove, eight, and, you know, um, if the city were to step in with this one, um, you know, what would we be in line for others? Mm -hmm. And currently that's not a service that we provide or oversee. And so, um, you know, not, uh, not moving forward at this time to to step into that um, ownership or oversight uh, role, but also uh, wanting to just help that cemetery board identify, you know, if there's another organization they could partner with, like a church in town, or find um, others that might be willing to step up and serve on that cemetery board. A lot of old Maple Grove families have history in that cemetery, mm -hmm. so um, trying to reach out to some of those folks. So we'll see where that goes for them, but we'll be helping them in the meantime, but not taking in not taking over. Um, ownership or oversight of that cemetery at this time. So that's it for the work session on the 20th. Now to the council meeting of the 20th, again, just under one hour in length. Then you had some special guests in the audience that helped get the meeting started. Yeah, so earlier, prior to the council meeting, we had a Cub Scout group come in and meet uh, with the mayor. They do this to get one of their, their patches or their badges. So um, get, talk a little bit about you know the city operations and council leadership and then stayed for the meeting and helped us, of course, with the pledge at the beginning of the meeting. So always good to have those groups in to learn about um, the city of Maple Grove. Nothing pulled from consent at that meeting, so the first item was the oath of office for a new police officer who has some neat connections to the city. Yeah, so this was for Officer Thomas Dobert. Um, he has been with us for a few years here. Um, he worked as a Maple Grove Community Service Officer for about a year, and then he also served in the Army for three years um, prior to transitioning to a law enforcement career. So we're really grateful for his um, work here and joining the department. And I think it was also notable this evening you know, we've uh, that evening and you know, the, the weeks ahead of us, we've had a horrible tragedy in the law enforcement and the fire department medic family with what's happened in Burnsville. And so that was acknowledged by the council and the officers, uh, police department staff that were in the room acknowledging their service and that it, it's not getting any easier. Um, and uh, everybody's grieving right now for the city of Burnsville and those that were, that lost their lives there. And um, so we're just trying to hold up our police department during this time of grief and know that those 
services are coming up next week and we'll certainly have folks from Maple Grove that will be involved there both on the police and fire side. So just ask folks to keep Burnsville in their thoughts and I know there's lots of ways to reach out and support um, those officers' families as well as the city during this time. Next item was community economic development updates and the one update is Planning Commission coming up on March 11th. Yeah. What is looking like will be on the agenda? Yeah, so we have another um, residential development up on the north side. So this is Rush Hollow North. This is sort of part of that another um, area of that development along 81 in Fernbrook. Um, so this is 25 lots being brought forward by MNI Homes. And then we have Top Line Credit Union out at 101 in Bass Lake Road. So kind of one of those out lots out in front of High V. So that'll be in front of the Planning Commission on March 11th. And let me just check on that preferred one credit union. Is that correct? Just to make sure we've got the right one. Uh, I had top line, top line in my right. notes, but it is a credit it's union. It's a credit so union. So <laughs> take, take a look for maybe that. Maybe I wrote, yep, could be. Very good. All right, engineering items, some great news about Fish Lake. Tell us a little of the history of this topic and what the great news is. Yeah, so you know, the city of Maple Grove in conjunction with our Lake Quality Commission and the various lake associations does a lot of work to try to improve water quality on the lakes in Maple Grove and a lot of work has been done on Fish Lake and so that lake is poised to drop its impaired water status, which is very, um, very much something to celebrate and great for the lake owners, um, the homeowners out there on Fish Lake, as well as the folks that use the yeah. regional park there on the south side. So congratulations there on the work there that has been done to try to improve the water quality on Fish Lake and um, we'll see you know continued good work on our other lakes as well with those lake associations and the Lake Quality Commission. Now to the longest item of the meeting on the 20th and that was an administrative item talking about the community center renovation and expansion. <coughs> We've talked a lot about this over the past couple years it has a lot of information behind it. Yeah. Tell us what was the lead up to this topic at the meeting and the 40 minute discussion was a long discussion. Yeah, so this um, follows on a joint work session that was held in early February with the park board and the city council to review kind of the design development phase for phase one, which is really the arena on the far west end mm -hmm. of the, the building, an additional sheet of ice, and then a lot of the site work, uh, parking, circulation, those types of things. Right. So that's, uh, we reviewed those plans. Um, I think much of the discussion was around parking um, we've had several renditions of how the parking might lay out there and how we maximize really the parking, the surface parking on that site. Um, so we reviewed that information and, and talked about some options to go west a bit. We are um, extending parking a bit to the south, but also there's going to be a relocation of that, that playground that's you know just due west of the existing arena there and then the Lions Pavilion as well. And um, some of those items, you know, still um, in motion in terms of okay. determining um, funding on that playground piece as well as the pavilion and then determining the extent of, of where we might go with the parking. And we have a bit of time here between now and when we would go out to bid on that project. Money of those things being bid is uh, bid alternates so that um, the council can make decisions once those numbers come in. But we'll likely be returning to the council here maybe um, early April time time frame um, to talk about those items a little bit further to get some direction as we lead into getting bids for this. Again, phase one, um, which would involve that third sheet of ice, the arena expansion, and much of the site work um, planned to get underway in July, right after Maple Grove Days, and about a year worth of, a um, little more than a year worth of construction there, so we would anticipate, you know, probably a ribbon cutting on that in the fall of 25. So okay. that project's coming up quick here, and then um, looking to, you know, start design on phase two of the project, which is really the balance of the community center. Um, likely May, June timeframe, we're working right now with the state to get agreements in place. We did receive some state bonding dollars towards um, the design and pre-design for um, the community center portion of the building. Um, we also, again, you know, pursuing state bonding on the construction side. So mm -hmm. a lot of really key important things coming up here in the next few months, kind of between April and June. Decisions to be made about how we proceed with this phase one and then and getting going on phase two of the project. So more to come here and, and stay tuned for that 
you know, development of the project. And again, that renovation element, very important because this is another one of those buildings that you don't think of the age of this yeah. building, but the community center has been around for a long time and yeah. is showing a little bit of age. Yeah, open to the public in 1997, and right. we always say well-loved, well-worn um, yes. when it comes to the community center. <laughs> Lots of activity in that building. We right. welcome over 650,000 guests to that building every year, and so lots of wear and tear and just mechanical systems, windows, roofs, those types of things, um, pools that are aging that are in need of reinvestment. Investment. So we are looking forward to that phase two and getting going on that later this summer. A lot of information on the city's website, maplegrovemn.gov. You can find out more and follow this process along. Last item on the agenda from the 20th, a few updates from admin, and the first was a lot of visitors coming in to vote. Yeah, so we are early voting for um, the presidential nominating primary that's going on right now. That primary will take place on March 5th, so the polls will be open that day um, for voting. But leading up to that, we do have a couple of extended hours available for early voting. Um, Saturday, March 2nd from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Monday, March 4th, we'll be there from 8 to 5. So there's lots of opportunities to come in. And we are in that early voting phase now where you can feed your ballot right in. Okay. You know, we're not doing the envelope process, the true absentee process. So nice. um, available there, second floor of the government center, we have staff there available to assist you and that'll be kind of the program as we go forward throughout this election year, this presidential nominating primary, then we'll get into the regular primary, right. then of course the general election in November. So lots of um, election activities going on in the coming year. And again then on election day this time it's just like a regular election. It is. So as far as where people go they can go to mnvotes.org and find out more. Yep. But it's all of the precincts, correct? It is. Yeah. And just note, um, in the last, you know, we did some um, reduction of precincts right. just mainly because of the number of folks that are voting ahead of time. We're really voting about 45% ahead in absentee mm -hmm. and early voting. And so the need for that um, number of precincts on actual election day has been reduced. Really helps us out yeah. with staffing as well as just, you know, the, the magnitude of producing an election on election right. day when you're voting so much prior. So just note that if you yeah. didn't vote in the last election and you're, you're right. going to get out this year, which we encourage you to do, mm -hmm. um, your precinct might have changed. So make sure you check that information before you head out to the polls. All right. Go to that website again, mnvotes.org. You can find out more. Other item that you meant at the meeting on the 20th was watching the Capitol. What yeah. are your eyes on down there? Yeah, so lots of things going on at the Capitol. Um, it's off to a, a fast pace again this session. I think, um, you know, we have three bills that we're monitoring down there. Um, we have our as I mentioned, uh, bonding, construction bonding dollars on the community center project. Um, we're looking for some transportation dollars on the 169 Elm Creek Boulevard interchange um, replacement. And then um, we have our soils district out in the gravel mining area, soils TIF district, tax increment financing, okay. looking for some amendments there to extend some timelines, give us a little bit more flexibility there. So looking forward to likely a hearing on that TIF bill in the tax committee on both the House and Senate side coming up. Not sure on the transit bill, but we've sort of satisfied the hearing re requirements on the community center project as we were part of the house bonding tour as well as the Senate bonding tour in recent months. So lots to pay attention to there. In addition, there's lots of bills that impact cities that are going on at the legislature that you know we um, either support or have concerns about. And so the SRO bill is something that we're paying right. close attention to. There's lots of bills affecting housing um, that are being um, put forth by the legislature that we'll be weighing in on as well as the organizations that we work with, you know, Municipal Legislative Commission, North Metro Mayors, League of Minnesota Cities, mm -hmm. Metro Cities, they're all sort of weighing in on that on that legislation as well. So lots to pay attention yeah. to and they're off to a quick pace down there. Busy, busy time of the year. So that's it from the meeting on the 20th and again the next meeting is on March 4th. We'll tell you more about that in just a few minutes. But now to some other items that are happening around the community and one item is some billboards may soon be going up in the yeah. city. Take us back to why this is a need. Yeah, so, um, you know, 21 years ago, we had a fatal hit and run accident that took the life of Rebecca Nelson at the community center. You know, such a public place with a lot of traffic and a lot of people present. Um, so that happened February 20th of 2003. Trying to elevate that again in the community. So there's been some social media done just to, you know, reach out and see if, uh, there's anyone who's willing to step forward and talk about what they might have seen that evening. Um, you can 
make an anonymous call to Crime Stoppers. That number is available on um, social media and website information there. We're also doing some billboards out on the, the billboard that we have access to off of 694 with that Crime Stoppers number and just kind of putting it back at the forefront of people's minds. Um, we do believe somebody knows something um, with regard to what happened there that night in, you know, 21 years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, certainly for the family, they would love to have resolution to this, to what happened to Rebecca that evening. So very important, you know, loss for this community. And uh, we just want to keep bringing that back up to see if we can't get some leads on this. Watch for that information coming out. Next item is, it's the time, and it seems to always be the time to talk about employee opportunities at the yeah. City of Maple Grove. You have lots of jobs available. Yeah, so we're doing a lot of hiring right now. Lots of information available at maplegrovemn.gov. There's an employment tab there. Um, real, you know, easy access to getting information, a job description, salary information, and then applying online as well. So, variety of positions, both full-time and then casual part-time type positions available. So, encourage people to take a look. Let's talk about moving some of the workers from Maple Grove downtown and back. You have Maple Grove Transit, which does a fine job of that. Yeah, so we, you know, of course, run commuter service to downtown Minneapolis every day, as well as reverse commute service from Minneapolis to Maple Grove, trying to get folks out here if they're sure. working in Maple Grove. Um, great service for workers and job seekers, as well as Maple Grove employers. Um, details and times available at maplegrovetransit.org. Then just also a reminder, our My Ride service, which is really sort of that Northwest Metro local service um, serves other neighboring communities as well. Um, that service is available to you for you know getting to and from work, um, medical appointments, um, anything you know shopping, those types of things, and mm -hmm. available online to book online, kind of Great. like an Uber type service. You Fantastic. can pay online, book online, and in a you know a near time frame as well. Mm -hmm. So encourage people to check out those transit options in Maple Grove. Yeah, many opportunities there. February is Black History Month, a lot going on in the city around that. You've been having some great response to some movies and more to come. Yeah, so we have one final movie um, that will be played Tuesday, February 27th, so coming up here next week. It's the animated Pixar feature, Soul, and the movie starts at 5 p.m. at the Maple Grove Community Center. All are welcome. There's no fee and no registration required, and so that wraps up kind of this film festival in honor of Black History Month. Encourage folks to come out February 27th at 5 p.m. for that soul presentation. And again, that's at the Community Center, a hub of a lot of activity in the yeah. city. And coming up in March, it is the hub for the indoor market. It's back. Yeah, so we're doing indoor markets March 7th and 21st from 3 to 6 p.m. at the Community Center. 2024 marks 20 years since the start of the Maple Grove Farmers wow. Market. So this is that's a big great. year. And then just a reminder, outdoor markets are going to start in mid-May, but we're going to be shifting up to Church of the Open Door right. um, because of the construction that will start this summer on that third sheet of ice mm -hmm. arena expansion, as well as the site, um, the parking and circulation area. So sure. uh, more information to come about yeah. that. And we're going to be doing some additional signage and, and communication about that farmer's market, outdoor market location change. Um, but don't forget about the indoor markets coming up March 7th and March 21st that will be inside the community center. Very good. Here's another thought for your spring and summertime needs. If you've had a graduation coming up, the city may be able to help out in the way of some space. How yeah. does this work? Yeah, so graduation, spring get-togethers, um, great options for you in the city, whether you're up at Central Park or the community center, town green meeting room, those types of things. Um, all pavilions, um, also park pavilions are available online, rental through the city website. So you don't have to call or talk to any, you know, um, get somebody on the phone. Um, all of those bookings are available online. All right, great opportunities there. Final note to pass along, date to mark on your calendar, Thursday, March 21st. Something happened related to your socks. Yeah. What is that? Yeah, this is a great <laughs> event that's been going on for a few years here. So it's the Rock Your Socks event. It's the World Down Syndrome Awareness Day is celebrated on Thursday, March 21st with a free event at the Community Center Gym. All ages are invited to enjoy carnival games games and music and this run event runs from 4 to 6 30 p.m. March 21 is symbolic because people with Down syndrome have three copies of their 21st chromosome. Um, brightly colored mm -hmm. mismatched socks are worn on this day because the chromosomes under a microscope look like a pair of socks. So that. this has been a very popular <laughs> yeah. event for the community and um, we're looking forward to hosting everybody again March 21st at the community center in the afternoon for this great event. Great. Hope you can get out and get involved. Well that's it for the recap this week. Thank you very much Heidi for joining us once You're again. Welcome. Let's leave you with some information that you might need to find out more about what's going on. 
and also attend that next City Council meeting Monday, March 4th at 7.30 at the Government Center. Lower left of the screen, maplegrovemn.gov. A lot of information there of what we touched on today and information you need moving forward in Maple Grove. For Heidi Nelson, I'm Dave Kaiser. Thanks so much for joining us on the City of Maple Grove Report.